Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Legends of the Dead. Alright, so in today's episode we're going to be doing this war, which we started in the previous video, but didn't really conduct it at all. I did let it play for a few days here to get our army set up, so we don't have to do that on camera. So this is our main army here, which has all of our knights and all of our men-at-arms, with the exception of the siege engines. And this is pretty much our best commander that we have available. So he has the best advantage. These guys are not currently an option. And then also when it comes to traits, he has the organizer trait, which is pretty good for the movement speed, the retreat losses. If you do have to retreat, uh, you'll have less of those. And you get some advantage bonuses in deserts and dry lands. Overall, we just don't have very good uh, commander traits. It's not really what our people are focused on. I do think it's cool that we have uh, a commander named Khalid leading our troops. Uh, there are quite a few famous Khalids in history. Uh, one would be during the uh, the Arab conquest. When they first started their conquest, there was a very, very famous commander named Khalid. We have two other armies set up here. This one is with the siege engines. We do not have a commander that has the siege, uh, what is it, siege engineer, whatever the, the trade is called. Uh, so I, I selected the Reaver instead, because this will give us the hostile county attrition reduction and uh, I think that's probably the best option, since we don't have anybody with the, the good sieging trait. And then this additional army here, this is simply because all these locations, the supply limit's kind of low. And so they're going to be traveling with this army. We're going to try and avoid the attrition. So I think we can get all the way over to here and siege the capital. And then this army here, this, these two armies, are going to go ahead and try and engage these guys. I'm going to see if I can't get to where they're going before they do. They're going to the mountains here. So I'm hoping we'll arrive there first. I don't know. We'll see, guys. I do expect, yeah, that's where they want to go. We could go here, but then they'll get the hill bonus, the river crossing, and the defensive building bonuses. So yeah, not the best option. So it's better to attack them there. So let's go ahead and just go over to this location. And we should be able to attack him here in the hills. He's going to go to the mountains. I don't know if he'll get there or not. We'll have to see if we can arrive there. Dang it, I didn't want this guy going over there. He's supposed to be going. No, no, he is supposed to go in here. The thing is that he's moving slower than this army, I see. I didn't realize that he was behind him. I thought that was the other army. Alright, so somebody is attempting to assassinate us. And this guy did take the money. So let's go ahead and say this idiot belongs in my dungeon. And then as far as what we're going to do with them, we're probably just ransom them out for the money now. Always use a bit more money. Especially during warfare. So we were able to discover horseshoes. So that was not the one that we were researching. We're going after chronicle riding. That one just increases the speed of our army, so it's helpful. But unfortunately, they did get to a mountain location. Uh, winning the battles is not what matters, though. Doing the sieges is what really is going to help us win this conflict. But why not destroy them? But not this way. Not by attacking across a river into mountains. That'd be... That'd be silly. And it looks like our cousin was slain during a battle. Okay. So let's see how we want to do this. I'll attack him in the mountains, but just not while well, crossing the river. He's going to get defensive bonuses. Yeah, that's going to go terrible. Of course, this is this army, but let's just take a look here. We'd probably win, but again, there's no reason to take the river penalty. You'd have to, like, wrap all the way around here, though, so obviously not the most convenient way of doing this. We'd have to go, like, up around, all the way up around here or all the way around here. Let me see which one would be the quicker route. I feel like that would be quicker than going all the way around here. Yeah, I think this would be quicker, plus it leaves us closer to this army just in case. I don't think he has any allies. We could double check on that. And that plague has left. Yeah, it's just unfortunate you always have to spend all this money or else give up legitimacy. Let me just take a look at where our legitimacy is at. So losing 20 might very well set us back. It actually wouldn't. So you know what, let's go ahead and do that. So 
So how does this siege progress? In seven months is when we'll get it done. All right, so yeah, we'll just walk all the way around this way. They might even leave. And it looks like we got our goblet here. So this is gonna increase the vassal counselor tax contribution by 3%, but only if it's a powerful vassal. And so again, that's another one of those bonuses that encourages you to put your powerful vassals in the council. Let's go ahead and put that in place. As we don't have anything in here. So yeah, that'll give us, you know, a little bit more money. That's helpful. It's not a huge bonus. Uh, I also don't know how many of those powerful vassals we even have in our council right now. It seems two. Two positions are held by powerful vassals. So we could get better bonuses if we had more of them in the council. So one of our vassals wants to discuss our experience as hunters together. We could do this option and we'll lose a lot of stress, which we don't even have. Or do this option and irritate him and gain prestige. We'll just go with that. We don't need to be a jerk here. So he is taken off. Okay. As expected. But that's okay. We're still going to go this way. I mean, it might be quicker. I don't know. I think he's just going to come back, though. Maybe if we let him, like... Let him keep... Yeah, I think it's fine. I was going to say, if we, like, let him get locked in there. But it's not necessary. He's going to keep going. Uh, we can't upgrade our legend now. All right, excellent. So we finally got it to the point where enough baronies have uh, heard about this particular legend. And so we can increase the quality. And so let's go ahead and do exactly that. That was a bunch of money that we technically needed for the war, but I feel like it's worth spending it in this case because we're not losing there's a patrol to offer here. We're not actually losing money. And I think it's it's worth doing right now. Now, will we want to get it to the next level? That's going to require 300 baronies. That's a lot. I don't know, guys. We do have quite a few promoters. We'll see the rate that it's increasing. Remember, we're sitting at 100 right now. We'll see if it's worth it. Remember, we do get some pretty good bonuses if we get it all the way to the, the final level, but I don't know. It'll take a while, I think. Probably too long. All right, so they're going over to here, and we want them in our own territory, so let's go ahead and follow them now. I think this is going to go our way with them deciding to leave because we just got far enough away that they didn't see us as a threat. They probably thought we were going to go like, uh, I don't know if we'll be to catch them though. That's the thing really. I didn't know you can go through here. I thought we had to wrap all the way around this way. They might go after this army here. That's what it looks like they're going to do. I don't know if we'll be able to catch them. We'll have to see. Um, might be quicker to go around this way actually. That's the way it seems. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Because I think they are going after that army. Our spouse is doing a great job helping teach our children. Yeah, they are going after that army. Okay. So let's make sure we're moving over in that direction. In fact, what's the quickest way over to here? Looks like we're going the quickest way. Alright, so is this uh, the next trait? Yeah, the next trait for our heir. Didn't we already get all the traits? Apparently not. We only have two of them. Uh, the arbitrary and callous, and then the next one is deceitful. Wow, this would be quite the intrigue character. So it makes sense to go with deceitful. Uh, honest would not be a good choice for him. Neither would humble, really. I mean, it is great for the piety, but it doesn't really fit with his other traits. So I feel like deceitful it is. That is our player heir. The next character we'll play as a treacherous villain. Uh, arbitrary, callous, and deceitful. Wow. That is a villain. So that'll be interesting playing as that character. Uh, so hopefully we get over here in time. I mean, the siege isn't going to be done anytime soon. It's five months. So it's not really being disrupted by must, uh, much time. But yeah, it looks like they're not even going to attempt to go over there now. Now they're going to go back into the mountains to defend. Now that our army is close enough. So this is one of our other sons, S. Fandier. I need to change all of their names, guys. Maybe we'll go through them all. Change their names. 
Uh, but he's with this other boy, the son of one of our vassals or something. Yeah. And so they broke into his armory, got caught, one of them got injured. And so we can say, understandable, who cares about this kid? And he'll become arbitrary. And the kid might become a, a rival of ours, or becomes closer to becoming a rival. They are a Seljuk, by the way. Or you can say, why don't you help him immediately? We'll gain stress. He'll lose the trait arbitrary and instead become impatient. And I think he's a stewardship education here. So arbitrary will reduce his stewardship, make him better at intrigue, also reduce his learning. Well, impatient does not mess with the stewardship, so you know what, I think we're gonna do that. So we'll go with that option. He'll become impatient instead. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna go through all of our children and just rename them. Maybe not all of them, obviously some of them are adults already. So you can't rename them. But our sons here, they can all be renamed. And just not have another generation of names that uh, I can't even pronounce. Or not sure the, the proper pronunciation. So we got Ahmed here. Have we had him? I don't know. Yeah, sure. We'll do Ahmed. So this is our son and heir. Though it's not the most fitting for what his... Uh... Yeah, maybe we should go with Salar. Yeah, we'll go with Salar for our heir. And then I went ahead and already renamed all of our other sons. I didn't do the, the daughters since we don't see much of them once you marry them off. You pretty much never see them again. Uh, but our sons, on the other hand, you know, they'll get titles and stuff and be vassals and probably play some role in their brother's court. And so we have Hassan here for the one we just had the event about, the stewardship focused one. Sharam for our learning education son, currently diligent. And then our youngest son we named Ibrahim. So just uh, names I can at least somewhat pronounce. <laughs> Make it a little bit easier for myself before they get so old that you can't even uh, adjust their names. All right, so I don't know if we'll better catch this guy now. I actually don't want to go through that territory. We'll go through this one. Okay, he's trying to get into his mountain territory. I don't know what he's doing. Again, it doesn't really matter because we're doing the siege, so I don't care that we're, we're chasing this guy around. Uh, we do have good supplies though, so. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll engage him here in these mountains. I don't know. It looks like he's retreating over to this territory here. It's not even his territory. Nah, we're going to fight him in the, the mountains. Okay, that works. As long as we're not getting the river uh, the river penalty. Uh, he also doesn't have any defensive bonuses there either. Uh, one of our promoters has left. Okay. So that's unfortunate. But if we're uh, curious, a lot of time has not passed. But uh, to just see how much it has spread thus far. Uh, five more baronies. Okay, so I mean it's it's pretty slow and remember we're spending a lot of money on this. We're gonna leave it as is for now. I'm not gonna look at it. Oh, are you serious? My wife is pregnant again. <laughs> wow. Okay. So far the youngest ones have all been daughters. But yeah. Probably gonna be a son this time. All right, so this gives us a, a bit of war score, as will the siege finishing up. Maybe we'll capture somebody important. Doesn't look like it. Well, maybe. I don't think it was much war score if we did. Nah, that's no war score. It was like a daughter or something. I didn't even look. Oh, we got some money from that. Uh, also. We took an item from him, the Lucky Persian Coin. Do we actually already have a Lucky Persian Coin? Can you double stack them? I mean, usually you can with items. Might be worth it. I know the stewardship or stress level is not helpful because we don't generally get the stress, but uh, the 2% domain taxes and the monthly stewardship lifestyle experience, I mean, both of those would be very helpful for us. So I think it's worth replacing uh, one of these, probably the, the Foxtail. And I'm going to actually double check and make sure we are getting both of those bonuses. I mean, you'd assume you would be. Uh, but I'm, I particularly want to make sure we're getting the stewardship. I don't know why we wouldn't be getting it. And then I suppose what we could do is get rid of the foxtail. Man, let me just double check on our education here. And make sure that we are currently getting it. We are. Okay, that's what I thought. Just wanted to confirm that wasn't in fact giving us the, the double bonus. So let's go ahead and get rid of the, the foxtail. 
So we're gonna want to destroy it for the 40, 40 gold. It's helpful because we didn't have any money. Oh yes, we also need to start another siege up. Um, so that gives us 23%. Remember, we want to conquer all of this area here. I suppose that's the next one that should be uh, taken over. So we'll take that next. Our son learned a new language. Okay. Sure, that'll be helpful in his future. Alright, so with this battle, it gave us a lot of war score. That's the 50% max. So at this point, there's really no point on doing further battles. Except for maybe capturing somebody. They are probably not going to. So we could just have our army do sieges instead. We gotta make sure that they're close to here. And then you're not taking too much attrition either. So like maybe go over to this location. Put these armies over here. Alright, so yeah, just a couple more sieges. And that should be enough. Uh, we can go and take a look at our prison as well. Uh, we had another promoter join. Alright, so replacing the one that we lost there. And this is the character we just got that one event about, you know, the hunter one. And so we can become friends with them. Or become closer to forming a friendship. This would result in us getting some stress. How powerful is this vassal anyway? Seems pretty insignificant. Yeah. Char apparently our character doesn't like him, so... He's not a powerful guy. We don't really need to act as if he is. Alright, so we'll do these sieges. Uh, this one, obviously... Well, actually, both of these. We don't have enough troops to finish them, so now they're going to take forever. Good god. Alright, well, what matters is this siege here. But more than likely, we're going to have to come over here and support the siege army once he stops on his shattered retreat. Oh, no. Our daughter died. She's married to the giant, and they never had a giant son. And it's off so devastating that our daughter died, of course. She died in childbirth. Wow. The child didn't uh, make it either. That's what it seems like. She did not deserve this, guys. Just devastating. And he needs a new spouse now. So we'll just probably try and find somebody who's in our court. Could also, since I've given him titles and stuff and he's our acclaimed knight, could also marry him to one of our other daughters. Keep him in the family, I suppose. I don't know that we have any daughters that are... I mean, I guess she's just 13. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll want to do it through arranged marriage. And I'll probably sort by house. Oh, you know what? That wouldn't work because he is a vassal now. That's right. Okay, so let's see if we can just go back to him and do it this way. This would be, this would be quicker. So is this the most useful character to be arranging marriages with? No, probably not. But that's what we're doing. He would not accept a matrimonial in new marriage this time, though. Despite the fact that he already has somebody from our dynasty inheriting. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. We're not going to do it, then. He can arrange his own marriage. I'm giving you the opportunity to marry back into my family, and that's your response. Well, screw you too, then, buddy. Oh. Uh, Another child lost. Wow. Okay, so not going well for our character here in the year of 1119. And we lost uh, a child and also, you know, there's a premature, not a premature birth, a uh, miscarriage. Our son did increase his learning by two. And you can see he's coming back, so he doesn't have a lot of troops, but he would be able to defeat this army. And thus, we're probably going to have to end this siege here, or else just leave. You just leave a few troops just to keep it going. You don't even need to leave anything large there. You can just put, like, 50 dudes there, and that's enough to keep the siege, you know, at its current progress. And I guess we should go this way. Make sure they can't easily uh, wipe out this army. Uh, another promoter has joined. And this character has joined our court. Okay. 
He might go and try and do that siege. Yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Either way. Oh, that's interesting. You no longer have those large supplies. Oh, okay, this is the army that had the large supplies. I thought it was this army, but that's not the case. Okay, so he's paying homage to us. Did he bring money? He did bring money. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we do need to resupply at some point. Another promoter has joined. You know, we're probably going to be making some pretty good progress now with all these promoters. We're up to nine. And so we're at 114 now. I know we're spending a lot of money on this. But if we keep having promoters join, it might be worth uh, doing. All the way up to 300. How often are you going to do legends, you know? Uh, this is actually pertaining to our legend. Necessary embellishments. If I could bother you a moment, my lord, starts Naveed. A tad wheedling for my liking. It would be a huge boon to us if we could commit some more detail to a valiant defense. The grander, the better. He looks at me expectantly. A few seeds of conspiracy begin to sprout in my mind. Going over the existing tale in more flamboyant, flamboyant detail surely wouldn't help. But substituting that part of the tale for another entirely has its own merits. So we can go with the honest option. Of course, I'll go over it once more. This is a diplomacy challenge. 60% chance that we'll get a discount towards upgrading our legend. Or just increase the discount. Uh, there's 39% chance we, we fail, but we get prestige, I guess. And we'll lose stress because we're an honest character. Instead, we can go with the diplomacy entry challenge. Not as high of a chance of success, but if you succeed, you increase your intrigue and change a chapter of Valiant Defense. 42% uh, chance it doesn't go the way we want, so no matter what, we'll gain stress because we're honest. Or you say, perhaps it's best to let the story grow naturally. This would result in us getting a bonus, and it's 100% chance of getting that bonus, unlike these options, you don't know what you're going to get, uh, to the Legend Spread Chance, 10% bonus. I think we're just going to go with that option, honestly, because we want it to spread faster. Think about how much money you're saving from it spreading faster compared to the money you save from that slight bonus. Because yeah, you'd be done with it sooner. So I really think that's the best option. But yeah, we didn't need the, uh, the war score for winning this battle. We simply did it. Let's go back and get... Well, I guess we could stay here and collect supplies. But yeah, we simply did it to ensure they can't relieve this... Uh, Location here, their capital. So our vassal here was wandering through the bazaar, giggling and staring at the clouds in broad daylight. So he's drunk. So is this the one we have? Yeah, that's currently leading the siege army. So the normal punishment would be to arrest him and flog him. So we can do that and he'll become wounded and we'll give him Heidi. Or say Allah will forgive us this time. He's our commander, so we're gonna go with that option. So just uh, about a month left to finish that siege. The supplies have been collected. This guy's going to come back, but his army's going to be even smaller and uh, less of a threat. So let's march over here to try and get the siege progressing. It's going to take him time to get over here. Well, we did finish up this siege as well, so we'll have to uh, move that army to a new location, find somewhere else to, to go after. But we're at 99%, so... Are we getting the ticking war score yet? You might have to have the entire area conquered before you start to get that. We got another legend event, the Lady of the Hills. So Navid is transcribing a valiant defense to Birch Bark as I dictate to him once more. But as I recount the very beginning of the tale, he ceases committing my words to the bark. I cannot help but notice that something is missing here. Did you not meet with a mystical woman in the Arg of Cars? Did said woman not rise from the waters and give you a divine mission? So we can say, ah yes, how could we forget? So learning challenge, 23% chance that we get the mythical water. So this increases holding taxes and development growth and popular opinion for 15 years, so pretty good. Also discount towards upgrading our legend. 54% chance we'll get the illustrious water, which is not as good, because you don't get the development grow. But still, pretty darn good overall. Our learning, is decent. It's pretty good at 21, so that's the reason why we have such a high chance of success. Uh, we have a 0% chance that we'll fail, but a 22% chance, like completely fail, I mean, but a 22% chance we get this this failure here. 
and that is overall negative. Uh, but we will get stressed because it's a lie. Or you say nonsense, I forged it myself. And we'll gain stress because we're diligent. And we'll get this bonus. But you know what, let's go ahead and go with this. Pretty good uh, bonuses there, and it's a 77% chance that we'll be successful. And people seem to believe us. So we got the illustrious one. So not the, the really good one. But yeah, I can't complain too much about that, guys. Alright, so this siege here, 11 months. I didn't move that army. Oh, wow. She is really skinny. She seems really skinny to me. She's malnourished. So she is. I guess that's what the event is about, actually. She's hungry. So she's a rogue servant who says uh, she's been stealing from her household. Oh. She's sniveling about hungry children and mercy in the name of Allah. Please, my lord, I'll do anything you ask. So we can show her what true hunger feels like, get 75 gold, spend piety, and we'll kill her. We can just imprison her. We'll get that uh, same 75 gold. Or we can show her mercy and win her loyalty and we'll get a strong, uh, strong hook on her. Because she'll, you know, she'll be loyal to us. I mean, she's not really useful. Just in a roleplay sense, I really feel like our character... I don't know, I just feel like he probably would show her mercy. In this particular case, she's starving. I mean, come on. So we're gonna do that option. Stealing for her children. Completely understandable. Alright, so... We're already working on the sieges here. I guess we'd go over to this one next. Going over here would be a bit too far away from our main army, I think. I mean, they only have 645 dudes, though. So even with the men in arms, I don't know if they can defeat 3,100. Another patrol to offer, which are probably going to decline here. Though, who is this guy? Yeah, we're just going to decline that. This guy's up there always trying to, to ally with us. Now, given our huge size, I'm a little surprised with our army size. You'd expect it to be a bit larger than it actually is. Um, we need to take a look and see how long it's going to take for him to complete that siege. See if we need to, to deal with it. Uh, secret's been exposed here. Doesn't seem like it pertains to anybody important. I don't know. I didn't really look at it that closely, though. Uh, we are not getting any bonuses from uh, prisoners. So we can go ahead and ransom any of these off. Of course, we don't want to ransom these two, and he won't accept a ransom. Uh, so there's really no reason not to just go ahead and ransom her, since she's not getting a bonus, because she's not an heir. And we're just going to take money from him, which weakens him. So I think it is uh, in our best interest to ransom her off. Uh, this character here... I mean, you could uh, recruit him. He's really not too bad. He's a doctor. Yeah, I could see recruiting this guy. He's Persian. Why not? And then, she's another one that will want to ransom, but won't be able to do it until he accepts the current ransom offer. But that'll get us another 25 gold. It's best to do this while he has the money. He can't afford the full thing, but you know what? He might not be earning. Yeah, he's actually losing money, so it's better to go and send it now. And Because this is going to actually make his army even weaker. Uh, so he gets the siege done in four months. And if you look at our own sieges... Yeah... You're going to have to go fight, guys. That's clear. So let's go ahead and send off this army to go and attack him. So that he can't get the siege done. Mess up all our, our work we've done here. And then that siege will finish up. And then the war will be over. Uh, we did get another perk. So we're going down this one here. Probably not going to use that decision and then that doesn't help us because we don't get the stress that's why we saved that one for last alright so we did capture some more enemies so it wasn't a total uh, waste coming over here because we can now ransom those uh, we did lose one of our yeah we lost one, lost one of our tax collectors so that guy we just recruited from our prison already is going to have a purpose. He becomes a tax collector. Alright, that works out. Glad we uh, brought him on. 
See if there's anything we need to be aware of. So apparently our daughter needs a guardian. We already know we don't want to vassalize that character there. And let me just take a look and see what our counselors are doing. Okay, so we actually need to increase control. But is there any location that we uh, directly... Yeah, these ones here we do own and need to increase control there. So we're going to start working on those. Even though it's war is going to be over soon. We'll get him started on that. Uh, currently, development is at 31 in the capital. So continuing to increase that. And we see if there's anything else we need to be aware of. Oh, uh, yes, the guardianship. Let me just take a look at what's going on with her. Did we not uh, select anything for her yet? Let me just take a look here. Nah, we didn't even select anything. So she could do the learning or the stewardship. I feel like we got a lot of people doing the stewardship. But whatever, she can keep that. I don't care. So yeah, we'll keep her doing that. And then... Just need to find her a guardian. And we could do it ourselves, but we're already the guardian for two of our children. And so it makes sense to just do somebody who has, I guess her wife could do it. Why not? Yeah. She'll do it. Oh yes, and then the ransoms. Because we have new characters that we've captured here. So this guy here could ransom himself off for the 30 gold, so let's go ahead and do that. Another prisoner that we captured who is a very good knight. He's kind of old. But yeah, why not? Why not recruit him? Yeah, you got this character here. Very good steward. Really no other purpose to him, though. I don't know what we'd actually use him for. Could just get a weak hook on him. Yeah, we'll just do that. In case we ever need to operate against this guy. Uh, we'll at least have somebody in his court. And then this character, we're going to want to ransom him all for the 30 gold. Alright, so making pretty good money from all this. And somebody died. Because we just inherited another title here. A couple more titles, actually. Okay. Oh, our uncle died. Okay, but didn't he have children? That's interesting. Yeah, I'll have to see what's uh, going on there. Yeah, we just gained control. I feel like we might have had that one already. Maybe not. But yeah, we got this one and this one. Okay, so we're going to have to take a look. Because, yeah, I saw our uncle died. He didn't have, well, he didn't have territory, but he had an heir. Uh, both of these uh, ransoms were accepted. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. We went down that way. We still have Arslan in our prison. But yeah, what uh, what happened with the compassionate? All well, his sons are dead. Oh, he outlived all his other sons. So that son died in, in 1096, so quite some time ago. This son was executed by our brother in 1083, and then this son died in battle. Okay, so that's what happened. He uh, lost all his sons. I didn't even realize that was the situation. All right, so yeah, worked out nicely for us. We gained his two territories over here. And so now we need to grant those out. Well, our sons are going to need territory soon. So we might just hold on to this until this war is over because it's, it's damn close to being finished. We just got to finish this siege here. And it's mere moments from finishing. Alright, excellent. So let's go ahead and end the war and force our demands. Because that gets us additional territory. We also got legitimacy from winning that conflict, which is good because uh, we're barely above five currently. Go ahead and disband our troops. We also need to appoint another tax collector. Okay, so one of them's dead. And we do have 
this character here. So we still got everybody who's at least good and one excellent. Although the excellent one is on the basic taxes. We need to switch him over to one of the other more important ones. Probably over to this one here. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's gonna switch these two out. I don't want to fire him, but uh, why can't you just like switch him? Since they're both tax collectors, that doesn't make any sense. Does that mean I won't be able to hire him again? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how that'll go down. Yeah, I want the excellent guy over here. You should just be able to switch them. Well, we did lose that penalty. All right, excellent. So now we're earning very good money. Now we've disbanded our troops. Uh, we have all this territory. So I think we're going to go ahead and start handing out titles to our sons now. I know they're young. Well, let's just go ahead and, and start giving these out. We have... We have a half-brother way over here. Could invite to your court. It's not exactly the guy you want in your court, though. Uh, so yeah, there is a, a brother there. I've got another brother over here. But if you wanted to he's him, you can give him more titles, but he already has three counties. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could give him these ones, this neighboring region, but it's not even in the same, uh, same duchy. So there's not really any family members to give the titles to other than our sons. We could just take a look here and see who all we have from our dynasty that's available here. The big problem though is a lot of these are going to be like uh, nephews and stuff who are already set to inherit territory. See, so yeah, I gotta go through them and see who's even set to inherit something. We have a nephew here. I can grant him something. Yeah, I mean, you got the one nephew. So we could give him something, which, uh, let me just take a look. Whose son is this? Oh, okay. He's got a lot of siblings, probably isn't going to be able to inherit anything. He's brave, calm. I mean, he's not a terrible character here. I can see granting him something. Something extra, if we have anything extra. But for now, let's give titles to our sons. And so, I want to give one of them territory over here. And so I'm thinking him, Sharam. Let's give him one of these two. We'll give him this one here. And I know that doing this might not actually appease his, what he set to inherit. Because, yeah, he was already set to inherit one location. But it will change which territory he was, he was going to get. Because I actually want this territory to go to our heir. But, currently, it is going to him, Hassan. And so every time I grant these out, it's changing the situation out, uh, changing the situation up. So what I think we'll do is let's actually grant out one of these two to that other son, to this guy, Hassan. Yeah, let's go ahead and grant him that one. I mean, this one will work too, it doesn't matter. But anything to change up which uh, location he's currently set to inherit. He's already set to inherit this one here. So you know what? Let's go and grant that one. And now... He's still going to get the Tabriz one. Okay. That's not what I want. What if I gave him this one now? I don't know if that would change it. We can try. It does. Alright, excellent. Because I want to grant this one to... Our eldest son. Our heir. And somebody else is sent to get it. Okay, who now? Let me just take a look here. And I grabbed the wrong one. Okay, so Sharon now is the one set to get it. Okay, so <laughs> we just gotta keep giving titles out uh, until we get this number down. Uh, let's go ahead and first satisfy the other son. Because yeah, we have one more son here, Ibrahim who has not gotten a title yet. And so as far as what we're gonna give him, we have these two to grant out. 
There's also territory up here that we can give out. Uh, this one is kind of crappy as well. So you could grant that one out. I want to keep this one. But that one's not great uh, with the eight development. This one's not good either. So you could grant them out that one. You know what? I think that's one we might give them. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Let's grant him that. His territory might end up being split up a little bit. He's still set to get the Tabriz one. God, I just cannot get this one into our son's hands. And we still have, uh, I mean, our heirs. Obviously, these are all our sons. We still have to give out three more territories. I'm just kind of hoping that it changes up enough. So he's currently set to inherit this one here. Let's go ahead and grant him this one. I'm not willing to give him more than two, really. All right, yeah, he's set to inherit another. Because when they inherit the next one, that'll be three total. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, guys. Uh, change it up. Uh, he already has the two, and is still set to inherit this one now. Wow. I can just not give that one to our our main son. That's unfortunate. We only have two more titles to grant out, so they have to go to him. So let me just take a look and see what they're all currently getting. Probably ones all through here. Yeah, it's all ones in that area. That's a real shame. I wanted to give him this one. Might change up again when I give him his second title, which is this one here. We're probably not going to go the way I want this to. He isn't set to inherit anything anymore, but uh, still probably not good enough. Yeah, it's just this one now. So we can give that one to our son, but still not the way I wanted that to, to go down. I just wish that, and this is why I don't like having this uh, inheritance system. I'd prefer to just be able to manage the titles as I want, like we did in the, the previous series. That was nice when we had that mod that I had made. Uh, but yeah, we can give him, uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, it won't let us give those two. We can do this one. So he doesn't have as many titles as his brothers, but, uh, you know, obviously he's inherited everything, so. So we just take a look and see what the situation is. Oh, now he's set to inherit even more titles. Okay. Whatever. She's no longer our wet nurse. She's too old for that position. Uh, we also have the untaxed vassals, which include our sons, so we have to get them added in there. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but yeah, it's looking a lot better here, cleaning up this territory here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the situation with the wet nurse handled first, so I don't forget about it. So I might have passed it. Here we go. Nobody is really good option. Yeah, her, you have the strong hook on. She's a poor option, though. She's lowborn. I just feel like a malnourished woman wouldn't be a good wet nurse. Yeah, I guess we'll do her. None of the options are good, though. But having so many poor addits is better than not having anybody. Uh, we do want to arrange alliances with all of our sons. So let's want to send those off. So they don't rebel against us. I whine at us too much great factions and any kind of, kind of a baloney like that. And we can demand a payment here on this character for the hook, and we're going to do that. I know I said we'd keep the hook for a case we need to operate against him, but you know what? I think it's better uh, to just go ahead and get the money. Uh, so there is another character that we can vassalize over here. So yeah, let's go ahead and send that off. We would have to give him the religious exemption, of course. So I assigned all our vassals to tax jurisdictions. We are almost out of positions here. And we we're kind of running a bit low. Because uh, we can keep assigning here, but then you're getting the hit with the monthly prestige. So. so one of our vassals is calling us out due to our clan favoritism. We gave a title to our son, and he wanted that title. Had a claim on it. So we can insult him. And this would result in our son becoming our friend. Might become a rival with our vassal here, though. You can say, forgive me, and then give him the county, which, that's tyrannical. 
or do not question my decisions again. 92% chance he's going to become angry with us. We're going to have to go with that option. And he is insulted, as expected. Not surprising there. And they, all of our sons will be allying with us as well. So don't got to worry about them operating against us. They're not really powerful vassals. but. And now we also need to add him in to the basic taxes, I suppose, which is the only position left here. Where it doesn't increase uh, that penalty to our monthly prestige. So yeah, this is definitely an issue. Not having of tax collectors and this is such a good one for the taxes and levies might just have to take the prestige hit yeah but we need to be careful who we assign to that because you increase their prestige so probably better to give like that position to somebody I don't know somebody who's we're not too worried about having their prestige increased uh, we have been invited to a hunt one of our vassals not really uh, important one it is pretty far away as well, so we're probably going to go ahead and decline this. It's a four-month trip for for a hunt. No, thank you. Nope, that's okay. All right, so I think what the next war is going to be is against the Byzantines, and they're, in fact, dealing with a rebellion right now. So it would be a good time to do that conflict. Did we lose another tax collector? Looks like it. Now we have to appoint somebody who's average. Okay, so this is uh, an important tax collector. The least important one is the basic taxes, so we're probably going to have to appoint this guy here. I think that's the best way to do it. And then with the basic taxes, you can just get the average character. Yeah, we'll do this character here. So it's going to hit our income by a little bit, guys. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think the Byzantines would be the next ones we'd want to go uh, go to war with. It looks like they're about to get another emperor. Prince Nars? I believe this is a different family, yeah. It's a completely different family here. And they are winning this war. And so, yeah, they'll have a, a new emperor soon. That would not impact our war, though. But yeah, they'll be weak, because they just dealt with this rebellion. The current emperor's pretty weak right now as well. But I kind of want revenge. That's really what it comes down to. Remember, they attacked us during our moment of weakness. When we were dealing with that really large rebellion. So now is a really good time to do it. Uh, we cannot do the holy war for the kingdom. Our devotion level is just not high enough. you got to be the paragon of virtue. That takes a while to get. We can do the jihad. For a kingdom so that would be an option so we could go after Armenia we could get this territory here in Syria Pontus would be the one we're gonna get the most territory or at least that borders us there's a significant amount of territory here if you do the Anatolia one the problem with doing the the jihad though is that other leaders can get involved and you might not get the entire thing and so that's something to consider it just depends on what you're going after so in this case they would go after it because it's serious so it's right next door so you do need to consider that so if we went after Pontus, nobody else is going to get involved i think it's just the one that makes the most sense anyways since it borders us maybe you go after any of this territory Again, I think it's pretty clear what we should go for here, guys. So let's go after Pontus. Uh, there could be other uh, leaders that might join as well. It's another thing to consider. They could end up uh, trying to go after it. Could just go after Duchy here. We just want the one on the border. Not getting a whole kingdom. But then you're uh, also not risking other characters becoming involved. So yeah, that's another uh, reason to perhaps go for this instead. It is a lot of territory. And then we could just wait until we could do a full kingdom once we have the, the Paragon of Virtue. Our character is still pretty young at 48, you know, relatively young anyway. 
And Zod will see us not get into the Paragon of Virtue. So we should be able to do that. Okay, maybe we'll just do the Holy War for the, the Duchy. I believe you can only do the, the one Holy War for the Kingdom, by the way. So it needs to be one that's pretty good. And so this Armenia one is probably not worth it. The Pontus one really is. He gets so much territory. Maybe we should save that. Rather than getting this territory here and then just do it for the kingdom. Or excuse me, the duchy of Armenia. But yeah, you can only do the, the one per lifetime. We also have to wait for the truce. As that gives us time to get to the uh, Paragon of Virtue. I think that's the best way to do it, guys. So we'd want to go for... It's the duchy of Mesopotamia. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to do. We'll go after this duchy here. And then we'll do the Kingdom of Pontus. Once the uh, once the truce is over, we should have the Paragon of Virtue. Alright, so do we want to declare war immediately? I think we do. Yes, we do. Alright, so we need to conquer this territory, which is also, uh, actually one of the uh, rebellions. The rebels. But again, that rebellion is going to be over soon, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we'll be close to that hunt, hunting location. Alright, so where do we want to go after first? Because we want to make sure we take over this area. I guess we'll go after that one. Let's go and raise up all our troops here. And then we'll split them up into multiple armies here. And one of our alliances did expire. I don't think we have very many strong allies now. And, uh, well, that's interesting. The Holy Roman Empire has decided to join against us. Okay. That's fine. He doesn't have a lot of troops at 4,000, but that does mean we'll probably want to call in some of our allies. We have a bunch of uh, potential vassals. Uh, let's go ahead and call in this ally here. So he's the one that has the 5,000 troops. I think that's worth the prestige. And then who all can we vassalize? Okay, so him because he's on the borders there. Yeah, we'll send it off to to him. He's known as the Gracious. Now this character over here. So their territory just broke up. Did he die? I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Yeah, the territory just all broke up. And so now we can just go and vassalize uh, both these characters. He's known as the Trickster. We won't be able to tax them though, unless we change up our entire tax system there. I have to take a look at that, guys. Our ally did join the war. Excellent. One more day and we'll have our troops rallied up. We're now above our vassal limits. Okay, so we're going to need to start making uh, duchy titles and handing those out. And I guess that makes sense as well, you know, with the tax jurisdiction issue that we currently have. So I'll have to figure out which title we want to hand out. We have to create one, I think. I don't think we have a duchy title that we actually want to grant out. Yeah, we don't have any. And so we'll have to, to create one. And so I'll have to look at where the best uh, location would be and who we want to, to grant it to as well. I think here, maybe giving this to our son would make a lot of sense. Giving him a duchy title, and then he'll be over his brother here, and his uncle as well. Yeah, I kind of feel like that would make the most sense. So this duchy title would be this one. You can create that for 212, and then hand it out to him. You know, let's go ahead and just do that now, since we know we want to... Who we want to give it to. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and, and grant it out. I guess the best way to do it would be this way. Let me just see where this sun is. So it's this sun here. You know what? Yeah, it'd probably be better to make sure that I'm selecting the right one. So this is Sharam. And so let's go ahead and grant him out the duchy title here. 
And that would get rid of uh, two of our vassals. This is really not enough, honestly. I mean, it's enough to not get the penalty anymore, I suppose. But eventually we're going to need to grant out more. Uh, so that will make our son very happy. And that means that his brother... His brother should be under him, shouldn't he? Maybe not. Maybe he's not in that. I thought he was. Well, apparently he is, but uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't give him to him. Maybe because he's got that territory over there. But if we don't grant our son to his brother, then we would be getting that penalty. He still has a hundred opinion of us, so it's not really like a problem. But it's negative twenty-five. I don't see any reason not to. So yeah, let's go ahead and grant him to him. That gets rid of another another vassal. Uh, we got another character that we can vassalize. Let me just take a look. Okay, so that's over here. Sure, why not? Wasn't planning on expanding all the way over here, but uh, if they keep on accepting it, then we'll do it. All right, so we're getting distracted from our conflict over here. Dealing with that. But yeah, we're going to need to do more when it comes to making stronger you know, actual dukes here. Uh, he accepted vassalization. Excellent. All right, so our army is formed. Let's go ahead and I want to get a, another commander here. Got a flexible leader. Now that we got that new character, and he's pretty good. Yeah, that's our, our new vassal. Why not? So he's uh, somehow able to teleport over here and join the war effort. All right, and then we're going to want to split it off the uh, siege weapons. Uh, these probably have pretty low, yeah, pretty low supply limits. So let's go and split off the the siege engines and give them a decent number of levies here. Give them the ones that are going to be receiving more troops. All right, so that looks pretty good. And so these guys, if we have... Which we probably don't, but if we have... Oh, we do. We've got a military engineer. All right, excellent. So he can come over here and start working on that siege. And then these guys are not going to be anywhere they can go with this size army. So we do need to, to split them up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get them down to... I'm thinking like 4,000, honestly. Yeah, we'll get them down to like 4,000. And then we just give them um, that reaver again. All right, so we need to keep our armies close by for now. Just kind of work on taking these locations. And then when their armies come over here, we'll attack them. I'm not going to go all deep in their territory. Uh, we could send one army. You know what? Actually, let's do that. If we go after this location, then we can put this army right here in the middle. Almost accidentally clicked on that when I'm trying to close this here. So we've already seen this event here. We're just gonna go with this option here. Take the prestige. Not going to that hunt. See if there's anything else we need to be aware of here. We can usurp this, but uh, we don't have any money. Nor are we earning enough money right now. Uh, we do need to get our untaxed vassal situation taken care of. Uh, we do have a slot. And both of these two, so let's go ahead and just put uh, whoever can even go into this position. Let's remember that is requiring that they're of the right religion. Yeah, we can go and do this guy. And then, I guess you can fit one into basic taxes. And uh, then we just have two open slots. Or two open uh, vassals that I don't really want to put to there. Yeah, uh, again, we just need to, to get this set up. Split off our, our vassals a little bit. Create dukes once we have the money. All right, so this is this vassal. We just got this event not that long ago. And we got it again. But it's a different person this time who's not leading our troops. So I don't want to spend the piety. Because we are a character who definitely play favoritism. 
<laughs> we do it quite a bit, actually. We're constantly playing favoritism uh, throughout this campaign. All right, so this is gonna probably be the last thing that we do here. I did want to take a look at the sieges. 16 months to do that one. This one's gonna take forever, three years. They don't have enough troops, and it's just uh, a bunch of levies as well. I just wanted to work on something since uh, this one's gonna take a while. But we gotta conquer all this territory in order to get the, the ticking war score. It seems that somebody had an acidic accident. This is the brother of the Caliph. Okay, so he's been horribly disfigured because of this alchemist here, this wandering alchemist. So you can have him join your court. And that's largely because we have this novice physician trait. At least that's uh, what's indicating here. So if he joins our court, he's, he's very useful. Very high learning, great traits and stuff, though he is a lunatic. But doing that would potentially result in us getting a rivalry with the, the Caliph, so probably not worth it. Could go with this one, no one is to blame here, you must forgive each other. That, that results in the same thing, but you get prestige. So obviously if you're going to take the uh, the chance that you get a rivalry with the Caliph and, and you irritate him, that's a 25 opinion regardless, you know, hatred, jeez. Uh, but if you go with one of these options, it makes most sense to, to get a useful character here. We're not going to do that. We're going to say, I do have space in my dungeon for this scrawny alchemist. Get 10 dread and imprison this character here. Does he have any money? He doesn't. You could just recruit him this way, though. <laughs> yeah, couldn't you just recruit him this way? Would that piss him off? I'm not entirely sure. If he'd care. Uh, we have a, another legend promoter join. So we got a lot of people promoting our legend. Let me just take a look see where we're currently at. On the progress, 139. We're making very good progress, guys. But still, it's costly and it's taken a while. But we might have gone too far and committed ourselves into it long enough where I feel like we should probably go for the last level. Why not? Let's let's do it, guys. We got 10 promoters currently. So I did want to take a look at our prisoners. We have this character here, the alchemist, but we also have this guy, the administrator. Should probably hire him. Yeah, you know what? It'd make a lot of sense to bring him on. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let him accept that. And he might be a good choice here. Because we have this average character doing the basic taxes. And he's very good, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and put him in place instead. And that'll increase our income some. Almost gets us out of the negative, actually. It's very important who you put in here. These aptitudes are just so uh, incredibly significant when it comes to what you're actually getting. Which I actually like that. I'm glad that they matter. And so it's important who you assign here. But unfortunately we do have to end today's episode. We didn't get very far on the on the calendar because we've been doing these wars. Uh, we took a lot of territory over here and then distributed it. We had to give it all out to our sons. And uh, we're going to be getting more territory now. We're going to take over all of this. We'll have to figure out who we want to grant that to. And then we need to start saving our money up so we can create more titles. We need We need more dukes, guys. We just have far too many counts. Although, I mean, we do have... Uh, if you look here at our, our vassals, we do have a lot of high ranking people. Yeah. Clearly need to, to create more dukes. You can also assign territory to people who are re already at the ducal level. Or just give territory to people who own something around here. Although this guy already has a bunch of stuff. I don't know, you can kind of just look around and see if you want to grant out any of this to somebody else. Yeah, a lot of these guys already kind of hold multiple titles. But maybe you give something to him or, or whatever, something to this guy. That'd be another option. Give a, a title to our son here. Although I feel like he's gotten quite enough as it is. He has not set to inherit anything else because we gave him the, the duchy title there. So yeah, that would be an option as well. Uh, let's just kind of hand out the territories to people that are neighboring here. But yeah, we got to uh, we gotta do something about our, our you know being over the vassal limit. And we've got to conquer this guy, the one-eyed over here. He needs to be taken care of. Uh, so hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.